Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina. My heart specifically is for those of you home sellers and home buyers that are out there, and prospectively the clients that I'm working with, or in this case, will be working with in the future in regards to this scenario. I don't want you to feel confused or overwhelmed by any of this. It's my job. It's our job as realtors to effectively communicate. In fact, the lack of communication is what's got us into this whole situation to begin with, but we're going to take a look at just that. All right, so the National Association of Realtors put together flyers for both home sellers and home buyers in regards to these changes in regards to this subject and everything that's being implemented in the month of August. So I'm gonna start with the home sellers. That's the shorter one. Let's read through this. As home sellers, you have a wide range of choices when it comes to listing your home. Agents who are realtors are a trusted source of advice and stand ready to help you navigate this complex process and make the choices that work best for you. NAR's recent settlement has led to several changes related to broker commissions that benefit sellers, and we wanted to clearly lay them out for you. And here are the points. Here's what the settlement means for home sellers. You will have the choice of offering compensation to buyers, brokers. You still have the choice of offering compensation to buyer brokers. You may consider doing this as a way of marketing your home or making your listing more attractive to buyers. Your agent must conspicuously disclose to you and obtain your approval for any payment or offer a payment that a listing broker will make to another broker acting for buyers. This disclosure must be made to you in writing in advance of any payment or agreement to pay another broker acting for buyers and must specify the amount or rate of such payment. If you choose to approve an offer of compensation, there are changes to how this can happen. You as the seller can still make an offer of compensation, but your agent cannot include it on a multiple listing service. MLSs are local marketplaces used by both buyer brokers and listing brokers to share information about properties for sale. Your agent can advertise your listing via off MLS platforms such as social media, flyers, and websites. These settlement practice changes will go into effect August 9th. Here's what the settlement doesn't change. Agents who are realtors are here to help you navigate the process of selling your home and are ethically obligated to work for your best interests. Compensation for your agent remains fully negotiable. And if your agent is a realtor, they must abide by the Realtor Code of Ethics and have a clear and transparent discussions with you about compensation. When finding an agent to work with, ask questions about compensation and discuss what you would like to offer buyers. You have choices. Work with your agent to understand the full range of these choices when selling your home, which will help you make the best possible decision for your needs. Now we're going to go to the buyers, but let's recap this real quick. The first portion, what they're saying changed or what it means for sellers. You have the choice of offering compensation to buyer brokers. You always had the choice of offering compensation to buyer's brokers. Your agent must conspicuously disclose to you and obtain your approval for any payment or offer that a listing broker will make to another broker acting for buyers. Your agent should have always been doing that. You should have always known the amount of commission that you were paying, that you approved and writing, which goes over the next couple of bullet points, and where that money was going or how it would be distributed. There should have never been a situation where you didn't already know those things. So what's the the real big difference. And we talked about this at length in this last video that we did on this subject. The big change are the final two bullet points. Your agent can now no longer advertise said commissions on the MLS, which is essentially a private line of communication amongst licensed real estate agents for all intents and purposes, at least in this regard. Now let's go over what the flyer says for buyers real quick, and then let's have a real practical discussion of what this all actually means. Because much like we talked about in that last video, there's a lot of language and a lot of conversation going on that I believe personally just lends itself to more confusion for the consumers and even for real estate agents for that matter, especially if they're newer or are older and are not uh, cannot adapt well to transition, it's very easy. And in this very video, we're going to explain to you exactly what the big takeaway needs to be for all parties at every table across the entire country when it comes to this subject. So home buyers, buying a home is one of the largest financial transactions most people will ever undertake. Agents who are realtors are a trusted source of advice and stand ready to help you navigate the home buying journey and make the choices that are best for you. NAR's recent settlement has led to several changes that benefit home buyers, and we wanted to clearly lay them out for you. 
Here's what the settlement means for home buyers. You will sign a written agreement with your agent before touring a home. Before signing the agreement, you should ensure it reflects the terms you have negotiated with your agent and that you understand exactly what services and value will be provided and for how much. The buyer agreement must include four components concerning compensation. A specific and conspicuous disclosure of the amount or rate of compensation the real estate agent will receive or how this amount will be determined. Compensation that is objective, and it gives examples, and not open-ended, i.e., Buyer broker compensation shall be whatever the amount of the seller is offering to the buyer. A term that prohibits the agent from receiving compensation from brokerage services from any source that exceeds the amount or rate agreed to in the agreement with the buyer. And a conspicuous statement that broker fees and commissions are fully negotiable and not set by law. Written agreements apply to both in-person and live virtual home tours. You do not need a written agreement if you are just speaking to an agent at an open house or asking them about their services. The seller may agree to offer compensation to your agent. This practice is permitted but the offer cannot be shared on the MLS. MLSs are local marketplaces used by both buyer brokers and listing brokers to share information about properties for sale. You can still accept concessions from the seller, such as offers to pay your closing costs. These practices and changes will go into effect August 9th. Here's what the settlement doesn't change. Agents who are realtors are here to help you navigate the home buying process and are ethically obligated to work for your best interests. Compensation for your agent remains fully negotiable, and if your agent is a realtor, they must abide by the Realtor Code of Ethics and have clear and transparent discussions with you about compensation. When finding an agent to work with, please ask questions about compensation and understand what services you are receiving. You have choices. Work with your agent to understand the full range of these choices when buying a home, which will help you make the best possible decisions for your needs. More details about these changes and what they mean can be found at facts.realtor. Now, I encourage you to check out facts.realtor if this is of interest to you and you have further questions or seek further clarity. But hopefully, and the purpose of this video is to really clear a lot of the air right here, right now, to be a mass benefit to many of you out there is, is certainly what I hope. And especially for my future clients, I want to share what is the most important takeaway from all of this? Because even going back to the buyers, let's ask the question, well, what really changed? Realtors were always supposed to be working for your best interest. Hopefully that's what they were doing whenever you signed an agreement with them to represent you. They were always supposed to be, supposed to be communicating clearly and effectively in regards to compensation. And the buyer's agency agreements that we've been working with prior to this settlement always were designed to clearly lay out exactly what compensation was and how it was to be distributed. Now they have updated our contracts in compliance and in a, in a greater effort to be compliant with these changes. Our local listing agreements and buyer's agency agreements have both been updated to add extra layers of clear, transparent communication, specifically in regards to compensation slash commissions. But I can say, in my opinion, they were really well drawn out before the changes. So now they're just even more so. So then what are the changes for buyers? One is the same as sellers. Communication of compensation cannot be done through the MLS. But the second one specifically for buyers is that a buyer's agency agreement must be signed prior to touring a home. It does not need to be signed to speak with an agent at an open house or just to ask them about their services. And we talked a good bit at length about some of the ways to view the necessity to sign an agreement in that last video. I encourage you just to refer back to that if any of this is of interest to you. Here's what the real takeaway from all of this is. And here's what I hope that real estate agents out there that see this video take away from this and prospective sellers and or buyers out there in the United States of America. All of this came about from a failure to effectively communicate. And the goal of these changes that have been implemented. Now, it may be debatable if removing information from the MLS really actually is effective towards achieving that goal, but I'm not here to debate that. The changes are made, and as professionals, we are going to adapt and change along with what has been mandated from the powers that be. And they felt all of these changes being implemented were in the best interest of the consumers and of the industry to facilitate efficient and effective 
transparent, clear communication. This came about because a lot of the communication that's being emphasized in the flyers that we just read was not taking place. So here's what you need to take away from this moving forward, whether you're an agent or a consumer. Understand that the conversation of compensation is very important. All of your contracts all over the United States should have a section in them that is specifically dedicated to the compensation portion of the agreement of the potential transaction. Make sure that you camp on it and that there's a discussion at the table, whether you're a seller, a buyer, and certainly if you're the agent. Don't rush through these things. We're moving into a large purchase or transaction, speaking to the sellers and buyers out there, and there's no need to rush. This process is gonna take at least a month, usually from A to Z. Sometimes it's gonna be longer than that, of course, and in some cases, maybe shorter. The bottom line is to sit down and take an hour, maybe less, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how the conversation goes, making sure everybody's clear and understanding, to have the conversation about compensation on the front end is a very small task that will yield very good results in terms of not getting into the boat that got us into this to begin with which is where everybody is fully understanding how compensation works, what they're getting for that compensation, and where it's coming from. So I can't overemphasize it. All of this was designed to force the industry, to force people at tables that are moving forward into house buying and selling transactions to have more intentional conversation and communication about compensation. That's what all this is about. So do it. The contracts probably across the United States, I know ours have, have been updated with extra layers baked into them to force you to have these conversations. And that's really what this is all about. Sellers or buyers, here's what I would say to you. This is my advice to many of you that I may never encounter because you're in other parts of the country. Your real estate agent should be able to tell you what their job is, how they perform it, what is the value proposition that they bring to you, what the charge is for those services, and how that money gets paid and distributed in a real estate transaction. They should be able to answer all of those questions. If they cannot effectively do that, if they don't have answers to those things, if they can't explain those things to you, I humbly suggest you should go find somebody else to work with. That's just the simplest way to say it. They should be able to answer those things. But here's the second thing I want to say also to sellers and buyers. This is the part that falls on you to an extent. You need to ask those questions. There's probably millions of real estate agents in the United States. And to think that every last one of them out there are going to sit down and be able to and will efficiently and effectively be intentional about communicating all these elements of their job, the transaction process, commissions paid to you is not something that I would recommend. You now have to have a buyer's agency agreement signed to tour a house with an agent. And across the United States, I think most agents are going to require that because they're not going to risk fines and fines from local associations can be very heavy. They're not going to risk that for one potential transaction that may not even come to fruition with you. So they're going to require it. So when you sit down to go over agency disclosures and certainly contracts, whether listing agreements or buyer's agency agreements, make sure that you are actually being walked through that agreement and that you know what you're signing. I know a lot of times people are just in a hurry. They're like, I know this stuff or I'm not worried about it. Just sign it. Let's do it. My suggestion is in this case, be prepared to take maybe an hour of time and just go over everything so that you understand what you're signing so that there's no confusion or surprises on the back end of the process. That's what the National Association of Realtors, that's what the Department of Justice, that's what local realtor associations are trying to accomplish is an environment where there's good, clear, transparent, intentional communication and that everyone, but specifically you sellers and buyers, understand completely what you're signing and why and how it works. Make sure that you know what you're signing. That's the bottom line. And if someone can't walk you through that section of commission, which is what the big part of this is all about, on that agreement, 
whether it's the listing agreement or the buyer's agency agreement, then you may want to kindly say, listen, I appreciate your time. I'm going to go look elsewhere and interview different agents because they should be able to answer those things for you. It's really pretty basic. All right. So this is probably the last time I'm going to do a video on this. I just thought that it was important. You know, last time I kind of gave you my spiel on it. This is directly from the top when it comes to the National Association of Realtors. So I want to share these flyers with both sellers and buyers and then kind of just complete the loop on this. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I'll try to get them answered for you as quickly as I can. And certainly if you're someone in the areas that I service and there's potential that we are going to be working together in the future, just reach out to me. My contact information is down in the description and ask me any questions you may have about these changes and how they are going to potentially affect possibly our working relationship or your working relationship with any agent for that matter moving forward. So look, I wish y'all all the best. I hope that this was helpful. If it was, and you did find this informative and clarifying, please give the video a like. It helps us out a lot. We really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing y'all soon. So y'all take care in the meantime, and we'll see you on the next video.